Uh, it's eleven. Uh, it's so uh, it's eleven minutes after one o'clock on uh, Wednesday, the seventh of uh, January, two thousand and nine. This is Mark Strassman in Los Angeles with Utopia News. I'm about to speak uh, to um, uh, Ashutosh uh, Saxena and um, uh, Siddharth Barta, B Batra in uh, Stanford, California. They're going to talk about their Zunavision program. Uh, welcome to Utopia News. Hi. Hi. Uh, give us a little bit about your background before you invented Zunavision. Uh, what, how did you get to Stanford? What did you do uh, before this at Stanford? What kind of research are you pursuing there? Um, so I originally did my undergraduate studies in a uh, school called Indian Institute of Technology, Kanpur in India. After I finished my undergrad, I came over to do my PhD in Stanford University uh, with Professor Andrew Ng. And my research area is in artificial intelligence and computer vision. Um, which means that I design algorithms and methods uh, which allow a robot or a computer to learn things. For example, they learn to perceive the environment, like how, what objects are there in the image and what is the 3D structure of the scene. So I design algorithms that can learn from data. During the course of my research uh, with Siddharth, uh, who is going to introduce a little bit later, um, we designed this algorithm to understand videos, which we converted into this company, Dunavision. Tell us what the basic concept is and, and how it grows out of your AI research. Um, so in my AI research, I designed algorithms to understand images. For example, given an image, what is the 3D structure of the scene? That was one of the things I worked on. Now we have extended this to videos in which uh, we can design algorithms that uh, infer certain properties from the videos. For example, um, what foreground objects are there? What is the somewhat 3D structure of the video? So we use this technology um, uh, to put uh, new texture images or new um, new videos into the videos. How does this relate to CGI and the kind of uh, mapping of textures that's done in uh, a film production? Uh, in film production, uh, there is a lot manual and uh, time intensive and expensive process. So they have these uh, softwares called Adobe Premiere and many right. other softwares, uh, which you need skills to make them work. So they have graphic artists who take it on a frame by frame basis. They uh, change the frame and create this artificial effect in the videos. What we want to do, do is to we take, we want to design artificial intelligence algorithm that can do this automatically. So within a few seconds, the user or an advertiser can basically modify the video even if he doesn't have any experience. And therefore, okay. yeah. Yes, as, as best you can, Talk about technically how it works, what the what the process is by which the artificial intelligence program is able to decide what's foreground and what's uh, background. So, for example, we are sitting in this room and we want to put an ad on the wall behind us. So right. the computer algorithm has to infer that, hey, I am a person, so the ad should not be on my face, but rather it should be on the wall. And if I move my head in front of the wall, uh, the air should be on the wall. So the algorithm has to figure out which parts are moving and which parts are in the background. That is one thing. Other, another part is that if the camera is moving, the shape of the wall will change. So we, it has to, the algorithm has to understand in 3D how that area is moving so that it can put a new ad on that area. So it essentially, it, 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 it analyzes the scene and uh, identifies elements of the scene and labels them. This is the wall, this is the face and then it can manipulate those elements later. Yeah, uh, more or less, yeah. Although we don't need to put exact label that it is a face, all it needs to know is what is foreground, what is background, and right. what is the general lighting condition of the scene. Okay. Um, uh, uh, talk about uh, when, when, when you, uh, uh, how this idea evolved. How long ago did you come up with this? What are you doing now to implement it? How can people take advantage of it if they want? So I will talk about the technology side. Uh, we started uh, one year back with this technology in which we started modifying videos. And um, and one of the pain that we saw in the online video space is that uh, people invest a lot of time in making videos uh, and they put it on many uh, big publishing websites or hosting websites, but they don't make any get any benefit from it. Our technology wants to enable those people to monetize those videos. For example, if I'm a video producer, I can put it on a popular channel uh, and accept advertisements inside my video, which are visually pleasing and therefore get some benefit out of that. Um, that's our initial strategy. 
the business strategy, I would defer to Sid so he can talk about it more. Okay. Um, so uh, uh, talk about what kinds of uh, video or still images can be inserted into videos using Zunavision. Oh, and before uh, you do can... that, before you do that, why is it called Zunavision? What what is what's the what's the meaning behind Zunavision? So uh, Zunavision consists of two words, Zuna and Vision. Right. Uh, and Zuna means uh, uh, success in some languages, including Sanskrit. So what okay. we want to say is it's a successful vision or successful. Right. Yeah, that's the meaning Thank of Zuna Vision. Right. Okay. Uh, you can talk about the kind the kinds of uh, images that can be inserted. So we can embed mostly a large amounts of uh, content that is available on the internet. For example, we can embed any kind of image, a JPEG image, a GIF image, any kind of logo, such as logos of companies. Um, we can also embed videos inside videos. That means um, we can embed, for example, a uh, MPEG-4 file or an AVI file inside a video. In addition, we can also embed a flash video inside another flash video. Um, and this can be all dynamic, um, and it can be decided what you want to do, what you want to embed at one time. So, if an advertiser had different kind of creatives, it could range from a banner, for example, the standard banners that you see on a bus or on a sports stadium, or a video, a small video clip that could that could go in in a new video. Okay. Now um, we're going to talk to uh, Siddharth in a second, but uh, just tell us a little bit about your feelings of accomplishment of having developed this. And your feelings and or anticipation about what's going to happen as as a business uh, uh, operation when Zunavision becomes commercial. Um, we we in in the course of our research, uh, including our uh, professor's research, we believe a lot in take, taking the technology further and making it really useful for people. So it's really exciting that we are able to take this technology and solve a pain that is currently in the video space. And um, it, will, it will be really exciting to see people using this uh, product that we are going to develop. Is it pretty much uh, where you want it now, or are you working on small refinements or, or big improvements as well? I think we are working on big refinements. Uh, it's right now, um, um, so we, uh, we are working on big refinements, which will make it really easy for commercial, uh, for businesses and people to use it online. Uh, okay. Which is going to talk more about. Yeah. Right. That's good. All right. So thank you very much, and uh, turn over the headset to Siddharth, and we can talk more about the business aspects of this. All right. Thanks. Thank you very much. Business future and current future directions. Right. W welcome, you're, you're Siddharth Batra. Welcome to Utopia yes. News. Hi, Mark. Thank Good. you. Good. Thank you. Um, so um, uh, Ashutosh has talked a little bit about the technical aspects of this and the background uh, for its development. Where does it stand now? Is, is it a website? Uh, how can people uh, see examples of the Zunavision uh, technology, and, and how can they uh, Zunify their, their, uh, their own videos? Uh -huh. Um, so we are very soon in um, a week or so going to release a commercial version of the website where which what Ashutosh mentioned that will enable content producers who are producing some nice genuine content to sort of monetize their um, inventory on video distribution sites and connect with advertisers who are our partners and who will also be coming through the website. Uh, in terms of getting a feel of it, um, for all these sort of channels and for content producers, they can for free get a login on our website and play with some videos and see if they want to monetize their content. For home users, we for the near future plan to keep the Stanford website up and running so that home users can just come there, maybe place a picture and all basically separate the commercial aspects of the technology from like the fun aspects of the of a home user using it for their images or their own personal videos. You talked about an example where a college student might want to have a poster of Albert Einstein for for sending a video to their parents and a uh, something exactly. else something else for their friends. Yes. Uh, just uh, uh, talk now about the the commercialization. Do you have a company yet? Are you doing this all yourself? Are you working with other graduate students? What's the what's the structure of the Zunavision uh, uh, commercial enterprise right now? So we have been officially incorporated as a company, and we have some seed funding from some nice investors who've been very supportive. And um, in terms of team, we're in the process of setting up a very nice team. We have some nice technical people and some business development people joining us, and we're sort of making a very nice team around this idea. 